Where was Mama? Mr. Rosen tripped on the loose step outside the kitchen door. His wife grasped his arm, and he regained his balance. It's very dark, Mama whispered as they stood in the yard with their blankets and bundles of food gathered in their arms. And we can't use any kind of light. I'll go first. I know the way very well, and you follow me. Try not to stumble over the tree roots in the path. Feel carefully with your feet. The path is uneven. And be very, very quiet, she added unnecessarily. The night was quiet, too. A slight breeze moved in the tops of the trees, and from across the meadow came the sound of the sea's movement, which was a constant sound here and had always been. But no const but no birds called or cried here now in the night. The cows slept silently in the barn, the kitten upstairs in Kirsty's arms. There were stars here and there dotting the sky among thin clouds, but no moon. Anne Marie shivered, standing at the foot of the steps. Come, Mama murmured, and she moved away from the house. One by one, the Rosens turned and hugged Anne Marie silently. Ellen came to her last. The two girls held each other. I'll come back some day, Ellen whispered fiercely. I promise. I know you will, Anne Marie whispered back, holding her friend tightly. Then they were gone. Mama and the Rosens. Anne Marie was alone. She went into the house, crying suddenly, and closed the door against the night. The lid of the casket was closed again. Now the room was empty. There was no sign of the people who had sat there for those hours. Anne Marie wiped her eyes with the back of her hand. She opened the dark curtains in the windows. She curled once more in the rocker, trying to relax. She traced their route in her mind. She knew the old path, too, not as well as her mother, who had followed it almost every day of her childhood with her dog scampering behind. But Anne Marie had often walked to town and back that way, and she remembered the turns, the twisted trees whose gnarled roots pushed the earth now and then into knotted clumps and the thick bushes that often flowed, flowered in the summer. She walked with them in her mind, feeling the way through the darkness. It would take them, she thought, half an hour to reach a, the place where Uncle Henrik was waiting with his boat. Mama would leave them there, pausing a minute, no more, for a final hug, and then she would turn and come home. It would be faster for Mama alone, with no need to wait as the Rosens, unfamiliar with the path, slowly felt their way along. Mama could hurry, sure-footed now, back to her children. The clock in the hall struck once. It was 2.30 in the morning. Her mother would be home in an hour, Anne-Marie decided. She rocked gently back and forth in the old chair. Mama would be home by 3.30. She thought of Papa back in Copenhagen alone. He would be awake, too. He would be wishing he could, he could have come, but knowing, too, that he must come and go, as always, to the corner store for the newspaper to his office when morning came. Now he would be afraid for them and watching the clock, waiting for word that the Rosens were safe, that Mama and the girls were here at the farm, starting a new day with the sun shining through the kitchen window and cream on their oatmeal. It was harder for the ones who were waiting, Anne-Marie knew. Less danger, perhaps, but more fear. She yawned and her head nodded. She fell asleep, and it was a sleep as thin as the night clouds, dotted with dreams that came and went like the stars. Light woke her, but it was not really morning, not yet. It was the only the first hint of a slightly lightening sky, a pale gleam at the edge of the meadow, a sign that far away somewhere to the east where Sweden still slept, morning would be coming soon. Dawn would creep across the Swedish farmland and coast, then it would wash little Denmark with light and move across the North Sea to Norway. Anne-Marie blinked in confusion, sitting up, remembering after a moment where she was and why. But it was not right. The pale light at the horizon, it should be dark still. It should still be night. She stood stiffly, stretching her legs, and went to the hall to look at the old clock. It was past four o'clock. Where was Mama? Perhaps she had come home, not wanted to make Anne Marie, and had gone, not wanted to wake Anne Marie, and had gone to bed herself. Surely that was it. Mama must have been exhausted. She had been up all night, had made the dangerous journey to the boat, and returned to the dark woods, wanting only to sleep. Quickly, Anne-Marie went up the narrow staircase. The door to the bedroom where she had slept with Ellen was open. The two small beds were neatly made, covered with the old quilts, and empty. Beside it, Uncle Henrik's door was open, too, and his bed, too, was unused and empty. Despite her worry, Anne-Marie smiled sl slightly when she saw some of Henrik's clothes crumpled in a chair and a pair of shoes, caked with the barnyard dirt lying on the floor. He needs a wife, she said to herself, imitating Mama. The door to the other bedroom, the one Kirsty and Mama were sharing, was closed. 
Quietly, not wanting to wake them, Anne-Marie pushed it open. The kitten's ears moved, standing up straight. Its eyes opened wide, and it raised its head and yawned. It pried itself out of Kirsty's arm, stretched, and then jumped lightly to the floor and came to Anne-Marie. It rubbed itself against her leg and purred. Kirsty sighed and turned in her sleep. One arm, free now of the kitten's warmth and comfort, flung itself across the pillow. There was no one else in the wide bed. Anne-Marie moved quickly to the window, which overlooked the clearing that led to the pass entrance. The light outside was still very dim. She peered through the dimness, trying to see, looking for the opening in the trees where the path began, looking for Mama hurrying home. After a second, she saw a shape there, something unfamiliar, something that had not been there the day before, a dark shape, no more than a blurred heap at the beginning of the path. Anne-Marie squinted, forcing her eyes to understand, needing to understand, not wanting to understand. The shape moved, and she knew it was her mother lying on the earth.